What's up guys, my name is Kelvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be discussing information about scorpions. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Alright, so although I will be speaking about scorpions in general, the particular species that I will be handling throughout this video is none other than North America's largest scorpion species, Hadrurus arizonensis, commonly referred to as the giant desert hairy scorpion. Now, this particular species of scorpion can be found in states throughout the southwestern United States, such as Nevada, Arizona, and also California as well. It's a misconception that all scorpions live in the desert, although many do live in the desert, a uh, hot, deserty, arid environment such as this giant desert hairy scorpion. I mean, desert is even in its name. There are many species of scorpions that live in humid, tropical environments such as rainforests. Uh, some of these species might include uh, the Emperor Scorpion, Pandanus Imperator, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Emperor, Emperor Scorpions just so happen to be one of those famous scorpions that most people are familiar with the name. Um, but yeah, they commonly live in tropical rainforests in Africa. Speaking from personal experiences, I have heard many people misrepresent scorpions for insects. This is not the case. So scorpions, believe it or not, if you didn't already know, are arachnids. So arachnids have a total of eight legs and also two body segments. So starting from back here, you have one, you have two, you have three, and then you have the fourth leg on this side. And so, of course, on the other side, you have four as well. So a total of eight legs. Now, you may be wondering what these claw-like appendages are. I'll get to later on in the video. It's <laughs> She's uh, pinching me right now. But uh, I'll get to those later on in the video. They are not legs, but uh, these four legs right here on this side and on this side, those are its true legs used for mobility. Spiders are arguably the most famous group of arachnids. If I had to take a guess, scorpions would probably be in second, but I discussed this in a separate video that I made. It's titled Five Facts About Emblypagids. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you go and watch it. But in that video, I talked about how there are 11 different orders or groups of arachnids. Spiders and scorpions are just two out of the 11 different orders. And so, like I just talked about, scorpions being arachnids have eight legs, and they also have two body segments, just like all 11 orders of arachnids. So really quickly, I just wanted to share with you guys my brand new line of stickers that I have available for sale on my website. All of these are various animals that I drew on paper by hand, colored them in, and then converted them into high quality, long lasting, waterproof stickers. Just to give you a quick idea of what they look like up close, here's one of my favorite drawings that I drew of a European hornet. All of these drawings were achieved by using these markers to color them in. If you're interested in purchasing any of these stickers, you can head on over to my website, calvinwiley.net, or you can hit the link in my description, which will send you directly to my website for you to purchase them. Thank you so much to all of those in advance who end up getting one for supporting my small business. And now, back to the video. So scorpions have the cephalothorax, and then they also have the abdomen. Those are the two body segments. And so looking at the anatomy of a scorpion, this entire back end right here is usually referred to as the post-abdomen. And then what people refer to as the tail, you have different segments dividing the abdomen. And so these segments right here are referred to as metasomal segments. And so leading all the way to the top of its post abdomen, you have what's referred to as the telson or commonly referred to as a venom bulb. So the venom bulb or the telson holds what we usually referred to as the stinger or the more technical name, which is the aculeus. And so the stinger or the aculeus is what is going to deliver the venom, which can be used both offensively and also defensively as well. And so this is the entire venom system. So 
when a scorpion goes and grabs a hold of its prey using its appendages not called claws i know they look claw like like a crab but these are referred to as pedipalps and it's pedipalps which let me see if i can put my finger in if it'll grab me with them oh there she goes she's pinching me a little bit <laughs> but um yeah so imagine my finger was prey scorpions will grab a hold of that prey and seize it within their pedipalps and then they'll bring their post abdomen around and will sting it deliver the venom into the exoskeleton or even if it's a vertebrate sometimes scorpions will catch mice um, and other small prey like reptiles the venom will enter its bloodstream and will become paralyzed and you know will eventually die um, and then the scorpion will then begin to release uh, digestive enzymes on its prey which will help break it down which it will then begin to chew and feed the parts of the prey into its into its mouth which is located all right under there and those claw like mouth parts are called chelicery and they act almost as their pedipalps which are also modified mouth parts so it's Claw-like appendages are actually part of its mouth system, in a way. Um, but yeah, those are the chelicery, the claw-like mouth parts. Now, when it comes to the toxicity of scorpion venom, this is going to greatly vary upon each species of scorpion. But there is a rule of thumb that you can follow, and you might have heard it before. And it goes, if a scorpion has large claws and a small tail, then it is not lethal. And then vice versa, if a scorpion has small claws and a large tail, then it is lethal. Now, I know I use the word claw and tail. I already stated that the claw-like appendages are the pedipalps and the tail is its uh, abdomen, metasoma. But, you know, usually people use the word claw and tail when referring to scorpions. But this rule of thumb does hold a lot of truth to it. Take, for example, uh, Pandanus Imperator. Pandanus Imperator, commonly referred to as the Emperor Scorpion, they have very large pedipalps and a very thin metasoma. And so when they catch their prey, they don't have to rely on strong venom to subdue it. They can literally crush their prey to death using their large pedipalps. Now, looking at the opposite of a scorpion with small pedipalps and a large metasoma, take, for example, Androctonus australis, commonly referred to as the yellow fat-tailed scorpion. Now, as you can see in the image that I have up provided, its metasoma is massive in comparison to its pedipalps. And so the message is very clear within this species you know, do not mess with it. It does contain lethal venom. Uh, so for the most part, this goes for most species of scorpions. Another species um, I could give, for example, who's, it, it doesn't really show the example of small pedipalps and uh, a large metasoma would be that of Liurus quinquequestriatus, commonly referred to as the death stalker scorpion. And so as you can see, although it does have small pedipalps, its metasoma is not that large. Um, you know, it's very questionable, but this species is extremely potent and, you know, can cause fatalities in humans. Uh, so you do have the rule of thumb that kind of goes for most scorpion species but it's not always so black and white and this species is a great example of that whereas its metasoma is not that large in comparison to its pedipalps all right well that is going to conclude today's video if you have any questions about scorpions or just anything in general please feel free to ask me in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed the video, if you could please leave a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon and turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Kelvin Wiley and also on TikTok at Kelvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, kelvinwiley.net and I will see you guys in the next video.